seven oh four. Time having arrived, I call the meeting of the City Council's Finance Committee to order for today, May 6th, and I think it's 7.04. Uh, Councilors, first of all, welcome back to the month of May. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have a great late spring, early summer. Yeah, uh, so. The way things are going. I had a, I had a meeting with the Mayor's Office uh, a couple days ago in terms of uh, talking about the budget and we should have those books uh, perhaps a little earlier this year than last, so we'll see how that goes. We're in no rush. Uh, <laughs> Council Fowell, would you uh, like to take item number three? Uh, yes. Uh, but I think we have, to, uh, we have to read that first before we okay. can go. So uh, make a Madam motion to take Clark. it out of order. Second. second. Motion has been made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, Madam Clerk, please read number three. Ordered a copy of all legal documents executed between the city and the Brockton 21st Century Corporation related to the transfer of control for these properties to the city and the outstanding promissory note signed by the corporation be provided to the city council. One, a summary of all outstanding contractual agreements, outstanding invoices for services or goods, or any other liability which was the responsibility of the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and which now may be incurred by the city be provided to the city council. Two, if payments from public funds have been made for charges formally required of the corporation, such information shall be provided to the city council. Three, documents and information requested shall be provided within 14 days of the date of this order. Invited, Michael Gallerani, Executive Director, Brockton 21st Century Corporation. Dan Evans, President, Brockton 21st Century Corporation. Philip Nasrallah, City Solicitor. Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Mary Lynn Peters Chu, City Auditor. Council. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council Fowler. Councilors, uh, this order filed by me asks for quite a bit of information on an important topic. As such, the City Solicitor indicated that he needed more time to pull together documentation, information. I know the auditor is working on some information for us. Um, B21 itself and its attorney is working on information, and they're not ready yet. So in fairness to the professional people trying to answer the, the request for information and prepare for this to have a full discussion, I would move to postpone this item to a future FinCom at the call of the chair. Second. Motion is on, the, on the motion. On the motion. Uh, that postponement has to be to a date certain, I believe. Uh, my, if I could, Mr. Chairman, through you to Councilor Cruz, Councilor Nesrala, uh, Councilor Nesrala, so Solicitor Nesrala asked that he be notified in advance, and he would let us know if he's ready. Um, no, I understand that uh, through you, uh, through the chair. Just uh, under rules, it has to be postponed to a date certain. So I would. I don't know if you want to put it off two meetings or whatever, but under Robert's rules, that has to be postponed to a then, or tabled. You could table it. No. Uh, well, and vote to get it off the table at another time. Then, I, then I'll add to my motion that it be the first FinCom meeting in June. Second. Second. June. Well, in wait June. a minute. Well, that would be around the budget. budget. The end of June. Be the third third Monday in June. We'll be That's a vacation. Our, our next count, our next FinCom is on the twentieth. Right. Of May. I, I, oh, you're saying that he does not, in 14 yeah. additional days, there's not enough time to get those. Uh, well, then let's try it. On the motion. Yes, uh, Council. I, I think collectively as a body, we need to have this information and have this heard before we go into budget. I, I believe. It, I, I, it, it, might, it might be a catalyst for questions at budget time. I, and I honestly think that, you know, 14, 14 additional days, I mean, he's basically had over a month or so to pull this stuff together. So an additional 14 days should be more than enough time for him to do this. So if you want to augment Then, then your, we'll, uh, we'll do the second FinCom meeting in May. So uh, May 20th. Motion will read, move to postpone to the second FinCom meeting in May. Second. Second. All right, motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor? All those opposed? This item will be moved to May 20th. Uh, Madam Clerk, number two, please. Total appropriation of $515,000 from DPW snow removal to school department tech 
Hardware, 50, 5, 000, sorry, 515,000, invited Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner, Daniel Vigent, Director of Technology Services, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Chairman, just to dot the I's, cross the T's, I'm going to make a motion to take number two out of order. That Second. would actually be a, a good thing. Uh, motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll do that. And it's been read, so uh, Mr. Clarkson, you're up. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the Council. I'm Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Happy to answer any questions you have on this item. There is, uh, because of the mild winter, as of today, approximately $938,000 left uh, in snow and ice. And so due to that, the mayor has filed two requests uh, to uh, transfer money out of that for specific municipal purposes. And those are here before you tonight. Uh, I do also, should you need it, have uh, an assessment of the last several years of snow and ice expenditures. So this has been an extraordinarily mild winter uh, where this money uh, is available for these purposes. Specific to this request, uh, Aldo Petronio, my colleague in the school department, is here as well to discuss any specifics. But this specific request for $515,000 will fund approximately 1,172 laptops and 14 carts for use by the school department. Councils, any question? Council Cruz. Uh, a question actually for, is it Mr. Vigent? Is he here? Or? Uh, it may be uh, Mr. Petronio needs to answer this. I don't know. How are the uh, laptops planned on, what, what's the plan for their, where they'll be? So uh, about three years ago, the Brockton School Department uh, made a commitment to go one-to-one, -one, which is one computer for every student. Uh, in those three years, we purchased about 12,000 laptops, so we're now currently one-to-one -one in grades three through eight. Uh, these laptops will help us get to our one-to-one -one from grades two through 12. We need 3,500, so these 1,200 will be applied to that 3,500 balance that we need. So that is gonna give you a total of about how many now after we do these? Uh, 13,200. And Aldo may need to tell us how many students do we have in those grades? 16,400. So again, we'll be at about 80% or so at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Council Cruz. Anybody else? We'll make a favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Council. Motion has been properly made in second. All those in favor? All those opposed? <coughs> that will thank be you. referred to the City Council favorably. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, agenda number one. <laughs> Total appropriation of 250000 <coughs> from DPW snow removal to planning and economic development, $250,000. <coughs> Invited Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economical Development, Tori Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, Mr. May. Bienvenue. Good evening. Mr. President, Councilors, um, as part of the snow removal or the uh, snow surplus money that we have, um, as the mayor stated in his State of the City address, uh, one of the things that we would like to fund is the uh, preliminary studies for a new public safety campus. The city has uh, finished up a new uh, municipal facilities um, report study. Uh, that looks at every municipal building that we own, uh, includes all the school buildings. Uh, we've uh, hoped to use this uh, study for a, a number of reasons. Uh, the first is to, uh, uh, to allow us to make application to the Mass School Building Authority uh, for improvements to um, the high school and to some other uh, facilities in the city. We also hope to use this report as the baseline for a capital improvements budget, which is something that the city has not had, but we need to take a look at, at how we rehabilitate our existing buildings. And so uh, Mr. Clarkson would come back and, and help you with that. Um, but as part of this study, um, we did identify uh, several municipal buildings that, that need some work on them. The two top priorities um, are the uh, police station and the main fire station. And so um, we've developed a scope of work 
that um, will help us through the schematic design process uh, for a new public safety facility, uh, campus, I should say. Um, and there are two potential sites that we'll be uh, evaluating. So the money that uh, we're proposing to use would be to first off hire an owner's project manager, somebody who's working for the city, um, and the um, building committee, which would of course include the uh, two chiefs, uh, the building commissioner, uh, Mr. Clarkson, myself, and uh, BIMA, uh, among other people. And um, we'll get us through the schematic design phase and allow us to uh, more accurately define a potential price for these um, two new two new buildings. Troy, would you like to add anything? Thank you. Move to recommend favorably. Uh, on the motion. Whoa, well, on the motion. Well, well, well. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Well, since there's hey, no we need a, we need a good police station. Uh, so, Council Fowler. Uh, I, I think respectfully, Council Borgad was first. If she wants to go. I, uh, I, I well, th first. thank okay. you, sir. Right. We'll, we'll defer here. Could I um, have Larry come up for a moment here, our uh, devoted um, DPW commissioner, please? You may. Mr. Commissioner. Good evening, counselors. Good evening. So did our um, new CFO in his uh, calculation here for the 938000 give you some extra money to pave our streets? No. No? Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to um, make it quite clear right now, not that I'm against the fire department or public safety, not that I'm against the police department, but right now, I don't believe there's a, a, more than 10 people in this whole city that don't think some streets need to be paved. And I just believe that I'd like to see that money go there. And um, you, your department, how would I say it, could use a whole lot more than 250. Maybe we could add an extra zero and a little, um, you know, comma there to uh, give you the money that you need. But um, I, I get a call every day, and I know you do too. And I'm sure you get that whole thing called C Click Fix. And um, it just seems that it would be more worthwhile to uh, see that money spent there. So I'm, I just want to be upfront with you about that. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh. Uh, colleagues and uh, Mr. May and others, uh, I certainly agree that we need a new police station. I, I mean, I worked out of that building. It's been obsolete for a while, so I support that. But I really have some concerns at this point. Um, we received four to 500 pages in four attachments on Wednesday, May 1st, uh, which was the master facilities plan, which I think cost several million dollars. And, and I gotta be honest with you, I'm good, but I'm not that good. I have not read four to 500 pages of the report. I did extract the public safety aspect of it because the order says in order to fi fund a master planning and design for a public safety complex, the first I heard tonight that this was going to involve the schools and SBAB is from Mr. May. Uh, that, that's number one. Number two, uh, the town of Westminster went through this and in January of this year, through their state senator, they received a $50,000 grant for a feasibility study for a public safety complex. We have one of the best legislative delegations. We've received money for playgrounds. And I would find it hard to believe that before we expend $250,000, we at least try to obtain some funding through our legislative delegation because apparently the precedent has been set that that will be done uh, in other areas of the state. Uh, we have upcoming budget issues. I don't know what the budget's going to show in terms of replacing police cruisers, fire equipment, or anything else. Again, $250,000 for a one-time appropriation for a feasibility study. You've got to triage these issues and decide if that's the appropriate priority. Superintendent of Smith, Superintendent of Schools uh, Smith will be coming in per a resolve that will be read next Monday uh, and assigned to FinCom to talk about the state of the schools. I think we ought to listen to her as to what the schools need because Operationally, the police station is not going to affect crime patrols, making arrests. I mean, it's nice to have a new facility, but it's the men and the women who are in the police cruisers out in the field. 
that are going to be doing the preventative patrol and responding to incidents. It's not like the fire department where they're housed in a building and they're there 24 hours a day. Once you report to work at a police station, wherever it's located and however new it may be, you're out in the cruiser. And unless you make an arrest or you're called back to the station, you're not going to go back there. So it takes on a little different meaning as far as a new police station versus a new fire station. Uh, in the URP, the Urban Renewal Plan, which we approved, the CSX property was listed as a potential site for a public safety complex, uh, a campus. I have no idea where this is going. Apparently, there's been two sites that have been selected. I have no idea where they are, and I would think we'd want to have some input from citizens and the mm -hmm. business community if, if we've reached a point where we've got two potential sites. I don't know what it's going to cost. Uh, I would think, given the description that is offered in the documentation that Mr. May sent out, that this is going to be a very expensive proposition. We're going to have to borrow. I would certainly want to know, if we borrow, what will our debt service be? What, what amount are we talking about borrowing if this thing is going to start at step one and proceed through the steps to actually building a complex? And if we did borrow for a public safety campus, would we be able to take care of the needs of the schools? Because I will tell you, as much as I'm in favor of public safety, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely a strong advocate for the schools. Those, those buildings for six and a half hours a day make a difference in every child's life. Uh, the URP calls for if the public safety campus went on the CSX property for a one-stop homeless center. I'm not sure at this point I want to start that ball rolling. I'm not sure I want to see if, if that's the site that's been selected, if that's one of the two. I'm not so sure I want to see a one-stop homeless center. It, it might be a priority of the administration, but it's not of mine. Uh, lastly, I just think, you know, the public's going to fund this. I mean, we, can, we, we kind of sit here and we can cloak ourselves in the manter, mantle of we're pro-public safety, we'll do everything for the police, but a project of this magnitude, to me, should have public meetings, either by us or by the administration or by planning, and let people in the community have some input. Where would you like to have your new police station? What would you like it to, to look like? What would you, where do you think it would be most advantageous? Because they're gonna pay the bill. Mm -hmm. They, they, whatever, they, whatever we do, whether it's state funds or local funds, borrowed funds, the public pays for it. So for all of those reasons, I'm just not ready to jump tonight. And, and the, the main one is I haven't read 500 pages. I'm going to be honest with you folks. I haven't done it. And uh, I think most of you know that I, I read everything because you've got to balance the request for public safety funds versus all of the other competing demands that are in those 500 pages, and there are many. And I think we'd be doing a disservice to ourselves if we just rubber stamped this and said, well, let's go ahead and start the ball rolling without, without really having a grasp on what is it going to cost, where is it going to be located, and I think we should involve the public. I noticed that there'd be a building committee, but you know, I didn't notice there was any real citizen input. And we had that for the urban renewal plan, and we've had it for parks and playgrounds, much to Councillor Azak's credit. She held a couple of, two or three meetings on, on the Walker playground. So I'm just not ready to jump tonight, but I appreciate you listening to my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Councillor Nicastro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Thank you for coming <coughs> this evening, gentlemen. Um, <coughs> I'm drowning in calls to repair the roads in Ward 4. I get several every day. And because our current system, the way that it's, it's funded, only gives each ward chair one street per year that I have to submit in January, I keep a list. I'm up to 16 streets on my list. And I call each person back or I email them back, depending on how they contacted me, and I explain this whole system to them. And I also explain to them lately that there's an infrastructure bill pending at the State House. Call our delegation and urge them to get it passed. More money may come our way, and certainly I hope it will go, a good chunk of it will go to roadways. But in the meantime, I also know 
So that's my first priority right now, just because I'm drowning in all these calls. And I feel so inadequate not being able to give people relief other than we'll come and fill your potholes. Um, I, I, I've taken the tour of the police department. We need a new police department. I've taken the tour of our fire headquarters on Pleasant Street. We need a new fire headquarters. The thing is, I always seem to be balancing between giving to our public safety people and our residents. And so I'm really concerned about what we should do here. Do you really need $250,000 to fund this study? Um, I don't know. And the last thing is, and Mr. May is aware of my concerns, volumes one, two, and three of the municipal facilities plan are dated December 3rd of last year. Okay, volume four is dated May 1st of this year. Or no, I'm sorry, it's dated March 8th. So these, these um, documents have been around for quite some time and yet I only just got them last week, in the middle of last week. And when you give me a document, I take it really seriously, I want to read the whole thing, but you've given me 500 pages and how can I adequately that I can't print, I was telling Mr. May, I tried print cutting and pasting portions of it. I can either print 100 pages of volume four, 128 pages of volume two, or I can print nothing. And I don't think my printer can handle all those pages at, in one sitting. So I haven't been able to print it. I haven't read all of it. I've just read what's been on my cell phone. I need more time. I think you've given it to me to read rather late. I need more time to read it to, to best serve my Ward 4 constituents. So I'm not ready to make a decision on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Council Cruz? Thank you. Uh, quick question for Commissioner Rowley. I don't think anybody underscores how much that uh, we could use money for our streets. $250,000, how much, what would you be able to do? Two streets. One street. One street. Thank you. Um, and I listen to what I was been said. I think we're very fortunate that we haven't been sued by our public safety unions for the condition of, or a prisoners group is going to come in and sue us for what, putting anybody in one of those uh, lockups downstairs of that building. Um, this is, and this is a study. This isn't the end of the, the process. This is the beginning of a process where the public will have input. Where the the rest of us will have input. I, I will ask that uh, you request through the mayor that uh, you get to appoint a city councilor to the building, this building committee, uh, to sit in on this. But I don't look at this as the end of the process, and I don't look at it as as something that uh, the public is not getting a say on. This is the beginning of a process that is about 25 years late. The police station is in deplorable condition. Uh, it's amazed me that we haven't had officers out sick that uh, the main fire station in the same way, the building department has done yeoman's work just keeping them open and able for human beings to work in them. And the, the police station is barely fit for habitation. So I'm gonna p make a motion to recommend favorably. On the motion. Second. Uh, I think I actually had council, uh, Councilor Yanieri first and then Council Sonny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Am I next? Yes. Thank you. And, and I, I come on the same heels as my colleague from Ward 1 um, when it comes to uh, the amount of money that is needed to uh, expend uh, for um, a street. And I would think that, uh, I agree, the $250,000 might get us one street. I would say Copeland Street, which is mostly all of Ward 4 that was just done, would probably be to the tune of about maybe $800,000. And I know I only had patches done, but because we have work to be done there, was, I realize If that. I remember right, it was in around 350,000 just to do that, because that's just a grind and overlay. Okay. Um, you're talking more money when you have to do a total dig out of a street. It, it's it, almost double that. Exactly. So the 250,000 would just, it would give me a very small street to do. Well, it's beginning. That's it, that's, that's correct, right. And, and when you go to finish to do the Copeland Street, which could be within a year's time because the gas company's gotta come in and do their, their work and they're gonna help do some because, no pun intended, but they have a habit sometimes of making a mess and leaving it, to be truthful with you, but they're gonna be there to, to do their piece of it and, uh, 
Yeah, and and that's still we're going to make them. That'll still be another three hundred. That could be another two hundred thousand for us. So there's about a six hundred thousand dollar bill for, for the street, correct? Just one correct. street. Correct. Okay. Just so just so ward councils understand that because I've only been doing streets for sixteen years and. Uh, you and I talked about some streets today that, that I have to look at that our forefathers never did the correct way, and, and you and I had discussion of that and, and the cost that it would be for me, and I just right. have to do the same as everyone else, and I'm getting, I'm getting calls every single day too, and you just you do your best and tell the people, yeah, I hope I, I hope I get to it. As long as I'm sitting there as the ward council, I'm going to do the best I can to do it, but I'd love to do every, every single street. The only gentleman that didn't like me is the one that wanted to know why we couldn't bang it out over the next weekend, and I said, because I don't have that right equipment in my driveway to help do it. So, you know, there are some things that we have to wait to do, but um, they don't come easy. The, the other, thank you, thank you also, Mr. Commissioner. The, um, the other point, um, again, I, I'm on the same, same track as Councilor Cruz. I mean, you know, we've been waiting years and years and years for a police station even a new firehouse, and, I, and, I, and I'm not trying to hit anyone below in a bad area, but I believe he was mayor then when he indicated he loved to have built the public safety building right where Vincenzo's building is today, and that's Mayor Fowle. He had said that back then when he was sitting as a mayor 20 some odd years ago. Here we are, 20 years later, where are we? Same decrepit building that's been there, same situation with the with the firehouse, which is old historic, yes, and we'd want to keep that that way. But I totally agree as well that you need to have a public safety building. And yeah, I, I'm for schools. I spent 20 years there. I know it's my history, but I spent 20 years there and watched. I don't know how many new schools be built, let alone how many schools we renovated as well. But and I, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to always make sure that the one thing that we have in this city is, is, is the best school system because that's what brings people to the city of Brockton. That's what's bringing people into Brockton. And it's an embarrassment when you have new people come in, new industry, new development, and they look and see what we have for a police station or a fire station. It does not help us when we don't start to move the city forward, as I've said it, I kept saying it last year as council president, when we got a chance to move forward, we move back. We start the situation, the people need to know, we gotta have this, we gotta do that, we gotta sit down, we gotta give them coffee, entertain them. Yeah, we do, but we gotta move forward. And I'm not opposed to what you're, what you're looking to do here with spending this money that direction. It's just the beginning. Am I correct, Mr. May? And I don't mean to be raising my voice to you, I'm just saying, but it's the beginning, that's all it is, am I right? That is correct, sir. It's the very beginning. And it just, it's just the starters. Huh. It's just the starters for what will lead us to do these next steps. Including you know what public I mean? involvement. In including <coughs> public involvement. It's correct. But if we don't take the first step, what happens? We continue to lose time. End of discussion. But that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm quite, quite uh, confused, to be honest with you. Uh, I've sat here for 14 years. There's not one person up here or in the audience or watching on TV that doesn't want a new public safety in the city of Brockton. Mm -hmm. Of course we all do. But when a councilor that was duly elected asked for more time, there's nobody sitting up here right now in good conscience can say they went through the 500 pages. There's just no way. And I, I mean, I have a bone to pick. I don't know why we got that when it was generated in March. But with that being said, I don't know why we wouldn't wait two weeks. Christ, we've waited 30 years. Two more weeks isn't going to kill us. And quite honestly, we all should be doing our due diligence and vetting that out. Because I'm confused when Mr. May get up there to talk about schools when the order is specific for public safety. So we can finger point all we want. We can go back when when was, was mayor. But at the end of the day, it's to do the right thing. And we wouldn't be doing the right thing tonight if we haven't vetted out the 500 pages. That's asinine to say we would be. So I'm not going to support to send it favorable. I think it would be better to send it back in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anyone else that hasn't chimed in yet? Councillor Powell. J just as a final thought, colleagues, for those of you who want to vote favorable, you're committing $250,000 towards a project. You don't know where it's going to be located. You don't even know any idea what it's going to cost. No parameters have been given to us at all, and you don't know if the city's going to be able to afford it. Am I on another planet? 
Is there anyone here who would buy a house and commit $25,000 towards the house and they don't know if they're going to have the financing and they don't know what the house might cost, at least within some range? So, you know, progress, yes, but act in haste, no. And I, if I'm sorry I feel passionate about this, but Councilor Ian Erie is quite right. I was mayor when we didn't have two nickels to rub together. When Officer Healy was laid off and I had no idea whether he was going to be brought back to this city to work. So if I seem a little bit anxious over financial issues, <clears throat> it's because I live through it. And I think one of the reasons why we sit here is to protect the interests of taxpayers and a quarter of a million dollars. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Cruz. I'll have a final say, too, because I'm passionate about this also. This study is to tell us how much this building will cost. If we don't do this study, nobody can tell you what the building will cost. I don't know what planet other people live on. I'm accused of living on another planet. I don't understand, and if we had done this 25 years ago and we didn't have the money, it would, would have cost us but uh, twice, twice uh, half the price that we'll end up paying. The longer we wait for these things, this is what this study does. This study will decide where the best place to put it is. It will decide how much the building costs. And until we do that, we can't move forward at all. If we don't do this study, nobody can tell us what this building will cost. That's what the study is, is to come up with a plan. And we w hopefully will be able to go to the state or the federal government which many cities and towns in the state have done, and get some help in paying for this building. But until we know how much to ask for and to say we have a plan, we can't do this. So we can keep putting it off if we want. It doesn't make any sense to me. Have I read 500 pages? No. Most of what's in there, we are aware of what is in there. We know we need the, the police, the public safety building. We know we have two major buildings, the, the downtown fire station and the police station are decrepit, falling down, and dangerous. It's time to move on. Mr. Chairman, I call the vote under Robert's rules. Uh, a vote has been called and I, the discussion ceases. Uh, all those roll, in favor. Roll call vote, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do a roll call. Madam uh, Clerk, please call the roll. Okay. Councillor Farwell. Yeah, no. Councillor Lally. Yes. Councillor Azak. Yes. Councillor Monahan. Yes. Councillor Cruz. Yes. Councillor Sullivan. No. Councillor Ernieri. Yes. Councillor Beauregard. No. Councillor Nicastro. No. Yo. Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, that would be a no as well. And I. Five five. Just a, no, five five. It does not carry. Mr. Chairman, Council Sullivan. Just so everyone is clear, what failed there was to send it back favorable to That's the full council. Correct. We can now entertain a motion to postpone till the next FinCom. It's, yeah, of course we can. Just that, just that motion was. No, it failed. It failed. So it goes, no. it goes to the council. It goes to the council unfavorable. Unfavorable. You better check the attorney resident on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Councillor, think about this. It goes back to the, uh, right, to the full city council, and then we actually can kind of go back and re-vote on this, and if we cho so chose to vote affirmatively, we can change our votes. And by that time, you'll have and an by, answer. By that time, because I want to answer if a city council will be joining the committee, correct? Correct. Uh, I, I, too, wanted to chime in. I know uh, I didn't get a chance to say anything. It's, it's not that we are against this public safety uh, building being built, but the issue is we need more time just to kind of go through this thing so we can just check it. I will support this in, in a week, but I just wanted to make sure I went along with the councils that, that asked for more time just to dive into this stuff, uh, because I think 99.99% uh, of us support a, uh, a new public safety building. I mean, all you gotta do is have a set of eyes to look around and see that we need something like this, but. Uh, I think we need some time just to kind of dig through that stuff. Uh, I just wanted to, before we go any further, also I had received a call from Councilor Darincourt that basically he couldn't be here today because he, uh, he had a prior engagement. Uh, is there anything else, Councilor Sullivan? Mr. Chairman, I just want to remind everybody we're having an ordinance meeting in two nights on Wednesday, May 8th here at 6 o'clock. 
um, Mark Lindy and Brockton Community <coughs> Access has asked the president and the chairman of the committee if we would object to having it filmed. There is no objection. Legal counsel has vetted that out as well. We just have to do a disclaimer at the opening of the meeting. So again, 6 o'clock here, Wednesday night ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Fowler. Well, what happened to me, but it's okay. Oh, was it you? Oh, yes, it was. Oh, okay, well, the Councillor is that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I need a moment of personal privilege. Hey, ma'am. Actually, a few of them. First of all, um, in tonight's meeting, a few questions came up about streets getting paved. And unfortunately, as you know, we all get calls. Everybody wants their street paved. And uh, once I explain the process to constituents, they understand and they seem to, um, you know, understand the process and they will hold on till their streets get paved. So what doesn't happen is we rarely announce what streets are getting paved. And um, I know the DPW contacts the residents, but I would like to make an official announcement of what streets are getting done this, uh, this year. So we'll start off, and these are, I believe in no particular order, they're throughout the wards, so maybe you can ask your um, individual counselors. If it's your street, you'll know it was put in by your counselor. Fern Street from Pleasant Street to Levering Street is getting paved. Levering Street from Fern Street to Troy Street. Troy Street from Levering Street to Pleasant Street. Boylston Street between Ash Street and Belmont Street. Cottage Grove Ave from Hillburg Ave to the end. Morrison Road, Coe Road, Raymond Road, which is Ward 7. Quincy Street, from Center Street to Court Street, Nazarene Ave, Copeland Street from Brookside Ave to West Bridgewater, to the West Bridgewater Line. That's 11 streets in the city of Brockton that are getting uh, repaved this year. There's also some sidewalks that are getting done as well. Um, you know, I won't name all of them, but if you have any questions, feel free to contact your individual counselors and they'll be able to tell you. My other moments of personal privilege include something that happened um, in the ward this past weekend. We had the pleasure of Council President Rodriguez and myself attended the uh, ribbon cutting of the uh, new uh, Ocean State job lot store up at um, 105 Campanelli Industrial Drive at the old location of the Toys R Us. I have to tell you it's one of the most really nice store, one of the nicer uh, Ocean State job lots. and. Um, we congratulate them, and uh, I appreciate them investing in the city of Brockton. They actually purchased the building and invested in the city, so we look forward to welcoming new business to, um, to our beautiful city. And the last moments of, um, last moment just to remind everybody that Brockton High School's Drama Club presents their musical Newsies this coming weekend, Mother's Day weekend, with the first show starting Friday, May 10th at 7.30 p.m. Saturday, May 11th at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, May 12th, and that show is at 6 p.m. Admission tickets to watch this amazing show is only $12, so I hope everybody comes out and supports our award-winning drama club. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Fowell, followed by Borgar. Just, just very quickly, there will be a Councillor at Large meeting on Wednesday, May 15th, from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m in the community room at Sullivan Towers, 140 Colonel Bell Drive. That's Wednesday, May 15th, 6.30 to 8 at Sullivan Towers. And everyone is welcome. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Councilor Borgo. Thank you, sir. A moment of personal privilege. You A few them. things. Okay. First of all, well, we know we postponed B21. Still want to know where we are with Aquaria, retirement, the Lopes case, and remember how we keep on talking about this historical commission? Is it going to be historical before we finally see people appointed in front of us? And um, also, on a, on a, a note, um, we had the 20th cancer walk for um, Broughton Hospital, and despite the really raunchy weather, hundreds of people came out, and just want to commend everyone for that. And um, so thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Councilor McCann. Thank you. A moment of personal privilege. You may, ma'am. Ward 4 will be having a meeting this month on Wednesday, May 22nd. Next week I'll announce the location. It will most likely be in one of our schools in Ward 4. Um, at this time, Officer Bill Healy will be speaking and I'll have a few other things to do. Above all, I'm here to sweat the details. That's why Ward 4 mm -hmm elected me, and time and again when I get phone calls, people thank me for looking into things. 
I, I, I'm not cavalier, or perhaps I'm not as cavalier as those of you are, who have much more experience sitting at this, in this room, on, at this, in this beautiful room, um, on these, this beautiful dais. When someone gives me 500 pages to read, I take it seriously and I want to read it all, especially if it's related to a decision I'm supposed to be making. I can't understand how some of these big decisions are made without proper preparation or without preparing to the nth degree. That's what I was trained to do as an attorney. That's the way I live my life. And so, therefore, I will continue sweating the details. I'd like to invite you all to join me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilors, uh, anything else? Having no further business of the people of this city, I adjourn the meeting.